how does using a revolution to establish a new world order look? Well, let's just take a look at Egypt. Here's a country that we're giving over one and a half billion dollars of foreign aid to, and this is what they are doing with it today. The Obama administration is ignoring U.S. law that prohibits giving aid to a country that has established, a government that has established itself with a coup. Rand Paul has pointed that out, but the media gives him a pass. He's allowed to violate the law as he sees fit. And Rand Paul even pointed out that a lot of that money, those billions of dollars, could be used to help to rebuild the crumbling infrastructure of America. But this is what we're giving money for. In an article today from Sky News, Egypt, there are hundreds dying in raids on Morsi camps. Sky News reported the Egyptian vice president has resigned in protest of massacres. More than 278 people have been confirmed killed after Egyptian security forces opened fire as they tried to clear two protest camps loyal to deposed President Mohamed Morsi in Cairo. Sky's Middle East correspondent Sam Kiley reporting earlier a camp in the capital said it was under very heavy gunfire and was a massive military assault on largely unarmed civilians in very large numbers. He said government forces were using machine guns, snipers, AK-47 and M-16 rifles firing into the crowd. He also added, there are machine gun rounds and snipers on the roof that are preventing people from getting any closer to the field hospital in the camp. I haven't seen any evidence yet of any weapons on the side of the pro Morsi camp. The camp is very full of women and children. So this is the kind of government that we're supporting. This is the kind of government that it is worth ignoring prohibitions against governments uh, giving aid to governments that were established by coup d'etat. That's why we have those kinds of prohibitions in, because those kinds of governments do this type of thing. Now, in further news, we have an article from Paul Joseph Watson on InfoWars. MIT says that future smartphones will listen to everything all of the time. A report by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology hails the era of, quote, technologies that emphasize listening to everything all the time, unquote. Ubiquitous surveillance aided by microphones installed on new smartphones like Google's Moto X that don't run off of the main battery. You can't turn this thing off just by removing your battery. And can, quote, continually monitor their auditory environment to detect the phone's phone owner's voice, discern what room or other setting the phone is in, or pick up other clues from background noise. The technology could make it possible for software to detect your moods, know when you're talking, not to disturb you, and perhaps someday keep a running record of everything you hear. It could also be used to pinpoint the sources of your stress if you're, taking too, if you're talking too quickly or present relevant information in relationship to your audio environment. In other words, give you commercials. As Paul Watson points out, it's kind of like 1984 meets Minority Report. It's pretty amazing when you stop and think about the capability of technology merged with an authoritarian regime that believes that it has the right to monitor everything about your life and record it. Very chilling, very chilling technology. And we have to get past the point that we want to just embrace every technology out of the box without looking at the real implications of this, not just for privacy, but for the entire society and how it empowers a totalitarian regime. This is far beyond anything that Orwell ever dreamed of far beyond anything that the Stasi ever implemented in East Germany or Hitler was able to implement because of this kind of powerful technology. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.